Welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about how to set up Fraps to record from Second Life. Fraps comes in two flavors, the limited version, which is free, and the full version, which costs US $37. For actual recording, we use the full version, and you'll find out why in a moment. But for this tutorial, we're going to use the free version. To install the free version, go to www.fraps.com slash download.php. Pause this video to download Fraps and install it. And after installation, start Fraps and resume this video. Pause this video now. Welcome back. You can also pause this video anytime if you need more time to follow along and check or uncheck options in Fraps. When you start Fraps, you'll first see the General tab. Because this is the limited version, the Registration Details box lists the restrictions in this version. We don't care much about loop recording or about the screenshots. The reason we cannot use this free version for production recording is because it inserts a watermark on the video. In this version, the recording automatically stops at 30 seconds, and that's fine. You just have to pay attention when it stops and hit the record key again, which we'll set up in a few moments. These options depend on your personal choice. I don't like to start Fraps Minimize because I prefer to have a visual hint that Fraps is running. Whether you want the Fraps window always on top is up to you. Sometimes it's convenient, sometimes it's a pain. I also don't recommend turning the Run Fraps When Windows Starts option because it can cause you lag even if you're not using it. The last two are optional. You can turn on the Monitor Aero Desktop, but it doesn't make much difference for what we do inside Second Life. If you minimize the system tray only, it will not create an icon in the taskbar of Windows. By default, Fraps thinks that you want to save your data in the same folder as the application itself. I recommend saving the data somewhere else. It would be better if you save into the internal hard drive if you have room, instead of an external hard drive. Because external hard drives could be slower than the internal one, depending on how it is connected to your machine. In this case, the D drive is the second partition in my internal hard drive. When you click the Change button, it will open up a directory selector. If you click the View button, it will open up Windows Explorer to the directory you specified here. You can leave the hotkeys to the default values unless they conflict with other applications. You want to set the benchmark settings to frames per second, and you can ignore the other two. On the right side, you can set where the benchmark is displayed on the screen. Before recording, you want it to be displayed so you can see the frames per second that you're getting in Second Life. So you pick one of the corners in this box. But when you are recording, you want to hide the overlay. Let's skip the Movies tab for now and quickly go through the Screenshots tab. You can take crisp photos through the screenshot feature of Fraps, even while you're retaping the machinima. You can do that simply by pressing the Screen Capture hotkey, which you specify here. And it is saved to the directory you specify here. You can choose the format of the photo, bitmap, JPEG, PNG, or Targa but the free version of Fraps only allows you to save photos as bitmap files. 
Leave the screen capture settings deselected. You typically wouldn't want the frame rate overlay on the photo. And repeating the screen capture can lag you even more. Now we go back to the Movies tab, which is what we are more interested in. Set this folder to where you want the files to be saved by clicking the Change button. The key you specify as the hotkey will toggle between starting and stopping the recording. You want to capture at 30 frames per second and at full size. And be sure to lock frame rate while recording so that the frame rate remains consistent throughout the film, which gives us a better quality. Since we are not doing a loop recording, you can ignore the buffer length here. Also, it is better to manually start and stop instead of automatically splitting the movie every 4 gigabytes. That way you can control the length of the segments and stop during natural pauses. Depending on what you are recording, you would want to hide mouse cursor and video, which you'll only need if you are recording a tutorial. If you are part of a camera team, you may not need to record sound and that would save a lot in terms of hard drive space and reduce lag for your machine. If you are filming faces of avatars that are speaking, you will want to turn this on so that the film editor would not have to match the mouth movements with the audio that it comes with. If you are recording only your own voice, you want to record external input and choose your microphone. If you are also recording other people in Second Life, you want to record Win 7 sound. However, be sure to turn off all other applications because it will also record sounds from those applications, like the ringing from Skype. And that's it. You're all set to record your first Machinima.